This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. Okay, this uh, lecture, we're still on the uh, management of working capital section of um, the syllabus. Uh, and in the previous lectures, we've dealt with the uh, management of uh, inventory, of receivables, of payables. And so the last area is the management of cash, which is chapter six of the free lecture notes. Uh, and um, I do need to have a, a short introductory lecture first before we look at the calculations uh, that could be asked because remember only 50% of the exam will involve calculations. Uh, you are expected to be happy with what you might call the, the chat bits, the written bits. Um, we said um, right at the beginning when I first started uh, going through working capital that just as any business has to accept a certain level of receivables in order to be able to run the business, equally they do need uh, a certain amount of short-term cash available uh, if you like to keep going. And you'll see on the first page of the notes um, there are three motives, three reasons standardly for holding cash, for keeping a cash balance. And so be clear what we mean by each of the three First of all, the transaction motive. This is the most obvious reason of all, that um, any business has day-to-day -day running expenses. They've got to pay wages each week. And so they do need to carry a, a certain level of cash in order to be able to pay their expenses. How much cash depends on the size of the business, obviously. But, you know, if you're paying, um, I don't know, 5,000 a week uh, in wages, then clearly you need to make sure that you've got at least 5,000 in cash. Um, so that's the cash needed uh, to pay the bills, to pay the expenses. Uh, however, it's all right, we can do um, budgets and estimate perhaps we need 5,000 a week for all our various expenses. But um, if all we have is 5,000, then it's a, a bit dangerous. You know, if one week uh, we happen to need extra for some reason, then we've got a problem. If we need 6,000, we've only got 5,000, then there's a problem. We can never budget precisely, obviously, exactly how much cash we'll need. And so standardly, it would make sense to hold a bit more than you think you need, just to be safe. And that's called the precautionary motive. The precautionary motive is where you hold extra cash To be safe and to cover uh, against unexpected um, requirements. Unexpected needs, I don't want to write too much here. So, um, uh, you know, I'm, there's no rule here uh, about how much, but if I budgeted I need about 5,000 a week, then perhaps to be safe. Um, well, I'll have an extra thousand, I'll have six thousand. The extra thousand, just this precautionary motive. Uh, the third reason, the speculative motive. Uh, before I write anything, let me give you two examples of what we mean by this. Uh, suppose my raw materials Generally, I'm buying, I'm spending 2,000 a week buying raw materials. Uh, but suppose this week I realise that the price of the raw materials is unusually low. You know, perhaps I'm buying oil or something. Uh, and this week the price is very low. Then what I might decide to do, the I think the price will go up in the future, is I might say, right, let's buy... Um, a month's supply 
so that we can take advantage of the lower price? Well, I can only do that, obviously, if we do have some spare cash. Or another example, perhaps I buy goods from abroad. I notice that at the moment the exchange rate is very good. You know, I'm, buy, I'm in the UK, these goods are priced in dollars. At the moment the exchange rate is very good indeed. And I think it will move against me. So again, let's buy extra now to take advantage of the good exchange rate. But again, I can only do that if we've got some spare cash. So that's what the speculative motive is. It's again holding extra cash. To be able to take advantage of, again, I'm not going to try and write a long essay on posh English, but special deals, perhaps not the best way of me writing it, but still, um, you know, be able to take advantage of the low price at the moment or the good exchange rate at the moment. Well, again, holding extra cash. Now, there are no rules for any of these. Obviously, transaction motive, we do need, you'll see later, to do some sort of budgeting to estimate how much we need. But as far as how much extra cash, the precautionary, the speculative, uh, it depends very much on the type of business. Uh, again, there are no rules. Uh, exactly, some people talk about a fourth motive, the investment motive. Uh, maybe I am planning to buy some new machines uh, in order to expand the business. And so I may be saving up extra cash until we've got enough to be able to buy the machine. Now, I'm not very keen on this because if you buy machines and things, maybe we can always borrow extra cash. But it could be a reason for holding some temporarily. Um, save up a bit of cash, then we can invest in new machines. All right, so those are the uh, motives. Um, very standard, learn the words. You could be examined on them. Um, two other bits, though, just to discuss before we start looking at numbers, is as we uh, do try and do budgets, how much cash we'll need, there is always, it's impossible to budget precisely, and there, there will be times when we start to be short of cash, and you've got there things you might consider in order to cover yourself for that short time when we, we're short of cash. Um, I think most of them are, are, are pretty sensible. Reduce inventories. If we cut down on inventory, it'll give us extra cash. Defer capital expenditure. We were planning on buying new machines this month. We realised we're short of cash. And so let's delay the purchase. Capital expenditure purchase on non-current assets. Uh, defer or reduce dividends. We were planning to pay a dividend. We happen to be short of cash either delay paying a dividend or pay less dividend. Uh, chase receivables to pay earlier, we dealt with receivables. If we can get them to pay sooner, uh, that might help uh, our cash shortage. Delay paying payables, fairly obvious. Uh, use short-term borrowing. You know, if this month we realize we're short of cash, uh, short-term borrowing, an overdraft, a negative balance at the bank, Sell surplus assets, that's common sense. If we do have non-current assets that we're not using, then that's a bit silly, clearly. Get rid of them. Uh, sale and lease back. Um, a way of generating um, cash, maybe I do own some machines. We are using them, so I can't get rid of them. What you can do is sell the machines to a leasing company we get cash. And because we still need the machines, we then rent them, lease them uh, from this company. So we still got the machines, but we no longer own them, we're renting them. And it does generate cash. 
Uh, other months, we might have cash surpluses. We might have more cash than we need. Um, and what should we do with it? Well, if it's just a short-term surplus, we've got too much uh, this month, but we're going to need it next month sort of thing. If you've got an overdraft, clearly use it to reduce the overdraft and save interest. Invest in short-term treasury stock. Treasury stock uh, is government uh, borrowings. You can invest in the state uh, and it's very safe. So invest in short-term um, treasury stock. You don't have to risk the money. They're very safe and at least will receive some interest. Uh, put it in a bank deposit account, obviously. Earn interest. Or invest in blue chip shares. Blue chip shares uh, are the name we give to very very big, very stable companies. Because again, this is only short-term spare money. We don't want to risk losing it. Obviously, share prices go up and down. But if you you invest in uh, blue chip, in very safe companies, then at least, hopefully, the money's safe and we start to receive some income. That's if it's short-term surplus. You know, we've got more than we need this month, but I'm going to need it next month. Uh, and we don't want to risk the money. If it's uh, a long-term surplus, if we realise we're carrying too much cash in the long term, then think back to the first lecture on working capital. That's a bit silly. And if we've got spare long-term cash, we should use it to invest in new projects, buy new non-current assets, expand the company. Uh, maybe consider, depending on how much cash there is, buying other companies, expanding that way. Um, increasing dividends. You know, if there's nothing to do with the cash, if we can't find anywhere to invest, there are no other companies to buy, uh, we can't think of any new projects, then don't just sit on the cash, give it back to shareholders. Either by paying them higher dividends or by buying back their sh the shares. Uh, and finally, of course, repay loans. If we've got loans on which we're paying interest, and we realise we've got long-term cash surpluses, uh, then it would be sensible to repay the loans and save interest. So, all of that is the chat side. In the following lectures, uh, I'll go through the, the calculations that you can be required to perform. And there are three, what you might call exercises, um, preparing cash budgets, something called the Baumol model, and something called the Miller-Orr model. But I'll go through those uh, in the following lectures.